I'm Mark Zubak from the Rexnord Bearing Group, and today we're going to learn how to install the Link Belt 22600 Tapered Adapter Roller Bearing. First thing we need to do is we need to check our shaft. We need to make sure that the shaft is clean. We need to make sure that the shaft does not have any raised burrs or raised material. Shaft does not have to be perfect, but raised material is really, really bad for the install. So if there is raised material, take some emery cloth and polish down those shaft surfaces, and then clean the shaft. Get all that dust and debris off that shaft. The other thing we also need to do is we need to check the size of that shaft. Shaft size can be found in the service instructions. Has to be within specifications. So I'm gonna go ahead and check my shaft size here, and it does fall within specification. So now we can begin our install. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna slide the bearings onto the shaft and get them into position. Once we have our two bearings in position, we need to loose, loosely mount them to the substructure. Why do we need to loosely mount them to the substructure? Well, the reason is because with tapered adapter, there is axial movement when we're tightening them up. So I need to prevent that axial movement from thrust loading the bearings. So by loosely mounting them to the substructure, it allows the housings to move while I'm tightening up those tapered adapters. So, putting the bolts into place and loosely tightening them. Position them the best that I can and begin the install process. Now with tapered adapters, what we have to do is we have to draw two tapers together. So in order to do that, the first thing we want to do is we want to get the zero position. You might ask, what's the zero position? Zero position is when there is no clearance between the shaft, the sleeve, and the inner ring. Basically metal to metal contact. And the way we can do that is with a flat blade screwdriver between the housing face and the adapter nut, we can pry on that nut, pulling the sleeve through. Once we have pulled the sleeve through, there will be threads exposed so that we can tighten up our nut. We tighten up our nut, and we want to make sure that that nut is good and snug so we can use a hammer and a drift or a spanner wrench. I'm just going to use the hammer and a drift because that's the most common tool in the field. Once I have that completely snug, the next thing I need to do is I need to mark it because we need to know what the revolutions are. So I'm going to mark on the face of the nut the thread and the shaft giving me an initial position. In this case, this is a 1 in 15, 16 bearing. I need to get this nut to rotate a full revolution or 360 degrees. So using a spanner wrench or a hammer and a drift, which is what I'm going to use, we begin tightening our nut. Once we have our full revolution, the next thing we have to do is we have to bend over one of the tangs on the lock washer. This locks the nut in place. If we don't lock one of those into place, the nut will come loose. Now what's very, very critical with locking this over, you have to rotate to find which one's closest. If one isn't right over one of the slots, then you have to tighten the nut to get one in position to bend over. If there isn't, make sure you tighten it. If you loosen it, you'll screw up the install and you'll have to start all over. So in this case, I'm pretty close on this one. So I'm just gonna give it a little tap. I just need a little bit more. I'm good to go. I bend over the tab. This bearing is locked in position. I haven't mounted, I haven't locked the mounting, mounting bolts yet because I still have a second bearing. So now if I have two fixed pillow blocks, I'm gonna go over to the second pillow block and follow the same procedure that I just did for this one. Once I have it locked in position on the shaft and tightened to the shaft, then I can position my pillow blocks, making sure that my alignment is, was in the plus or minus two degrees and making sure that all my positions are good. Once I have that, then I can go ahead and I can tighten my, my lock bolts up.
and my install is complete. Fairly simple. That was two fixed pillow blocks. Now if I had an expansion pillow block, like this one actually is, the only difference is I would follow the same procedure throughout, except I need to center my cartridge. There is a cartridge that is centered in this housing. So I get the same amount of float back, back and forth, I'm gonna center that cartridge. So I can use my hammer and a drift to make sure that that cartridge is centered. Then once I do that, I can lock down the expansion unit. Remember, when fixed in expansion, always tighten the fixed unit first and then tighten the expansion unit. Hi, this is Mark Zuback of the Rexnord Bearing Group, and I'm gonna teach you how to install two fixed flange 22600 tapered adapter mounted roller bearings. As with all tapered adapter mounted roller bearings, there is axial movement of the housing when I tighten up the tapered adapter sleeve. Something has to move in an axial direction. If I leave everything tight and tighten up those tapered adapter nuts, I will thrust load one bearing against the other. So to prevent that thrust load, we have a little bit of a special procedure, especially on two fixed flange units. So the procedure we're gonna go through is we're gonna mount, get the bearings positioned on our shaft, get them positioned on the structure with our bolts. We're gonna go to the first unit and we're gonna completely tighten the mounting bolts. We get them tightened up against the substructure. We go over to the second unit. On the second unit, we have to provide for that axial movement of tightening that nut up. So what we want to do is we want to put shim stock of a certain distance based on bore size, which is in the surface instruction. So make sure you look at your surface instructions. This particular case, I'm using 42 thousandths of shims. Generally, you want to shim in three points. So three points makes a plane. So I get positioned in three points, and then I snug my mounting bolts up against those shims. I've got that position in place. I got my shim stocks. Now I can begin the full install. I go over to the first unit. First thing I do is take out the, just like I did with pillow blocks, using a flat blade screwdriver, get between the face of the housing and the lock nut, and pry out the adapter nut to get that, to that zero clearance point or that zero position. Mark that zero position, tighten it to one turn as per the service instructions and bend over one of your lock tabs. The next thing we got to do is we're going to go, this one's completely done now. Now we go over to the second unit. I got to deal with these shims. First thing we got to do is we got to take the zero clearance out. So again, using a flat blade screwdriver, we get between the nut and the housing and we pry on it to get to that zero position. Tighten our nut up by hand, then using either a hook type spanner or a drift and a hammer, want to make sure that that nut is good and snug so that I've got my zero position, just like I did in all the other units. Once I've got that zero position, this is where I'm going to start to create axial movement. So now what I have to do is loosen my mounting bolt slightly to get the shim stock out. Do not tighten the mounting bolts at this time. So I've got my shim stock out. Now I go through the mounting procedure. As with all the other units, I'm gonna mark it. In this case, again, it's one revolution because it's a one in 15, 16 sparing and using either a hook type spanner or a hammer and a drift, which is the most common in the field. I'm gonna start tightening this guy up. I need to get one full revolution. I get to my one full revolution, and again, I have to make sure that I lock down one of the tangs on the lock washer. As with all the other units that we've mounted so far, look for the one that's closest. Hey, I got lucky on this one. There's a tab that is locked, that is matching up, so I can just pound that one down. But always remember, if there isn't one lined up, make sure you tighten the nut, never loosen the nut so you can bend the tang over. So I'm gonna go ahead and bend the tang over. Bend the tang over, I am positioned. Now I can tighten up my lock, my, my mounting bolts. So I go ahead and tighten up my, my mounting bolts. Mounting bolts are tight, your installation is complete. 
Thank you. For more information or documentation, please visit rexnord.com and for tech support, email bearing.tech.support at rexnord.com.